started riding Troy's helmets way back in like 95. Okay. And On the bicycle? Yeah, it was bicycles and I, I wanted to get a helmet and Randy Lawrence brought me in here and introduced me to Troy. And I told, uh, I told Troy I was going to podium at mountain bike races and he just kind of didn't know who I was and kind of laughed at me. And um, he said he, it was kind of like I was so cocky and he just laughed so he just he, he painted me a helmet and he gave it to me I think. I don't know if I paid for it or I think he gave it to me actually. And he painted my first helmet and then I just blew up in the mountain bike industry and then we became better friends and then I've been just wearing the Daytona and the D2 ever since. Okay. But at first he, he thought I was a joke, you know, I said I was going to beat Lopes and Carter and guys like this and he was just laughing at me. Yeah. And then he was at Big Bear when I crushed everybody by four seconds in 96 and then I've been wearing the helmet ever since. What, what made you so good at that sport so immediate, so right from the onset? I think it was just the, the time in my life when I really wanted to win stuff. I was on a mission uh -huh. to just attack every sport that I entered and really beat the top guys in each sport. And but I mean all that all that came from BMX as a kid before I even started snowboard and BMX racing and all my motocross built my body for that and motocross and BMX the combination and knowing how to do those I just jumped on a mountain bike and it worked for me. Yeah. And you show you showing up there and doing what you did and how flamboyant you were. I mean, that was almost like like the Sex Pistols coming come coming out of nowhere. I would think the way that community must have reacted to you. Yeah, it was pretty crazy back back then. They were pretty damn square. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, everybody was in lycra suits, and I mean, I even ended up wearing it because it came down to the tens and seconds and right. the hundreds. And but <clears throat> I think they made a rule now in the UCI. I think. There, there is a rule where no more skin suits allowed and you have to run a visor on your helmet. Really? Yeah. So you have to run gear and a visor. So you were as a head so, of the curve. So I think I did, I did have something big to, to give to the mountain bike industry is to make them look cool and not like ballerina dancers, that's <laughs> for sure. All right. So All right. That was cool. All right, so this, this D2, is this a new one? Yeah, this, R &D? A, <coughs> yep, this is a new one. I designed it. Um, with the help of uh, Paul and Jay back there and, and Troy with this design here, as you can see. What uh, what went into that design? Like you being a rider and what you do, what were you looking for as far as like technical and aesthetic? Uh, and it's just as far as, it's, I, I always like the, tech, the technical side of it just comes from Troy all his R&D with the carbon and everything else right. and the look. The design that I did was the graphics mostly just to keep it clean and uh, and keep it fast looking which I always had I always had good helmets because I had always had a lot of input with the guys painting my stuff here over the right. decade you know this one's just got kind of uh, some race scallops as you can see it looks fast it's kind of the same design as my my legs and and wrists right it's kind of got something to do with me personally the crowns right and, right. Uh, and then Jay's all Jay's always pinned my stuff, so this design's pretty sweet. So it's, there's some of your Cadillac and your, your hot rod stuff in there too? Yeah, definitely. All the pin and, and the crown is definitely my style. And it's clean, which uh, I always like my helmets to look fast because that's, that's what you're putting on top of the brain that wants to go fast. So. And the functionality of it is it real light? Re works really well for the sport. Yeah, the carbon. Vision. The carbon's good for snowboarding and mountain biking okay. because it's so light on your head. You kind of barely know that it's you're on that you have a helmet on. You know. Right. Right. And uh, yeah. Is there anything out there that compares to it? Do you think? Compares to this helmet? Yeah. No. Okay. Nothing. Even if you didn't design it, would you say that? If you if you lined them all up put a blindfold on you, could you tell right away? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean this fit, this, I don't, I don't know, about, I guess I've just been in bed with these helmets my whole life, so. Right. I would know the difference if you blindfold me and put another helmet on, for yeah. sure. Okay. But the quality of this and the, how light it is, it's the best. 
Okay, and then um, a question I really want to ask you is, tell us about your relationship with Troy. I mean, um, I know <laughs> we've got to put this in, man. I mean, I know. Well, last time we did an interview, he fucking edited it. <laughs> he took it out? Yeah. What'd you say? I told him he, just, he didn't leave that shit in there. But he said, oh, it's someone in a different department. <laughs> My relationship with Troy is a love hate. We're two. We're like brothers, you know. Yeah. I, I fucking love him so much. I keep coming back. But I wouldn't fucking say that I ever fucking made a mortgage payment out of this building. That's for <laughs> sure. But I love him. I love the product here. And you know, I'll probably be here for life, as far as you know, as, as much as I think about it. But fuck, he might get a black eye down the road. For real. <laughs> You never know. No, I'm mean, not. I mean, he deserves one. a fucking punch. No, I was in Anaheim one year. You fucking love him, but he's fucking tighter than fucking anybody. <laughs> you were pretty steamed up, and he came over to talk to you, and I, I, I can almost see, I can almost see your your fist kind of getting ratcheted up. Yeah, I was on a lot of painkillers, and my whole dreams of the Olympics was over. I OD'd, made the team, made the Olympics, then got hurt, and then he had a buzz on, and he was fucking trying to give me a little shit, and I was giving him. It almost turned into a, a a brawl up there in the old Nutcracker, or whatever the <laughs> that bar is. <laughs> so but I'm glad it didn't. I mean, what, what I mean, he might get a black eye. It's not a bad thing. It's just a friendship thing. You must understand that he just deserves to come in to work with a shiner out of love.